Welcome to another episode of Air Guns and Pesting Channel. In today's video, I am working on my Evanix Rainstorm SL. Getting ready to install this UMA regulator. That's the regulator, that's the plenum adapter, and here is the plenum. So, tools you will need, four millimeter for the stock removal, and a 2.5 to remove the air cylinder from the main body of the air rifle. So, I already degassed it already and the gun is in, is not loaded. So, it only takes one, there's only one screw holding on the stock, which I already loosened up. Hang on a second. You will have two screws right here, two Allens, 2.5. You just loosen these up. You have a barrel band on the end of the air tube. You don't do nothing there. And you just basically just pull this whole assembly right out from the, the main body or the block. Pull it right out. Now, this is what I did. Yeah, there's some gouges on here, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have, I thought I have a wrench that would fit right in here. A skinny open end wrench on both sides. It's flat. I couldn't find, you know, I used to be, uh, well, not used to be, I'm, uh, I work on cars and motorcycles, and I've got pretty much all the standard and metric wrenches that, you know, a typical mechanic would have, and I didn't have anything that would fit. So it must be a special wrench that I don't have. So I went ahead and took this right here. Yeah, I could have put a piece of cloth or a piece of leather around there, but I didn't because I, I want to get this uh, done and over with and you don't even see it once this whole action is back in the stock. And that's what I use to loosen it up, to bleed the air down, to remove the air from the cylinder because there is no way to, there is no, like in some of the modern PCPs, they have a bleed screw that you can, you know, take an Allen wrench to loosen it. Well, this didn't have it. So it's just like the, the hot signs. Basically, you know, it's, uh, you, you got you to gotta loosen up the, the gauge, get it to leak. I take that back. Uh, no, you don't. Not on the hot sign. I'm thinking of another gun. I'll think of one. I'll think about it here in a second, which gun it was that you had to actually, uh, oh, it was, uh, no, it wasn't that one either. Anyways, this is the only way that you can remove the air from the cylinder. So that's what I did. I ended up uh, taking a wrench, crack it till it bled all the way down. And after that, it was fairly uh, easy uh, to um, do afterwards as far as uh, removing this valve assembly from the air cylinder because this is where all the parts fit into so let me uh unscrew this real quick and i'll be right back this end right here the valve assembly from the the air cylinder okay as you can see it, it unscrews so 
So in uh, my instructions, it's fairly self-explanatory. You're gonna to wanna to remove this O-ring because once you put the, this O-ring right here, once you put the regular in there, the regular needs to breathe. And you can do that by removing this O-ring and leave about what they say is a five millimeter gap. You know, you don't close it all the way, you know, screw it down tight onto the air tube. They want you to leave a five millimeter gap. But they also said that the better alternative is to cut a slot, okay? A slot right through, right down here. Straight line and a slot on the air tube. So what I'm gonna do to do that is use one of these uh, little uh, grinders here and grind a slot like that all the way across so that the regular can breathe. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show you how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grind it and then when I and then I'll get right back to you and you'll see what I did. I'll remove the O-ring and then I'll, I'll uh, grind a slot right down right down on the, the tube itself. Not the tube but the the valve threads itself. Be right back. Okay, so I made a mark right here. That's where I'm going to this mark right here. Just put a little scratch mark on the tube and right here. And that's where I'm gonna take my grinder, cut off wheel, and cut a line right down on this, cut a line on this block right here once I unscrew it. All right. There's the line that I cut on the block. This is what I use. Right there. And that's gonna allow the regulator to breathe. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-assemble everything before I screw everything back on the block. Be right back. Okay guys and gals, this is the O-ring I removed. It was on the valve uh, block assembly here that I removed. We're not gonna need that no more, so that can go on the side. Guys and gals, make sure you uh, take some silicone grease, especially, you know, all the rubber parts, like I just did it here. Put some silicone on the rubber O-ring there, on the valve assembly there. It puts a little silicone on there. Give your O-ring some love. Um, there's the regulator right there. It's set at a, looks like 145 bar. That's what the regulator is set for, which is okay. We'll start at 145. And get the little decal. I always put the decal on the action when I get done. You'll see in some of my videos, uh, like the hot sign or or even the crowd gun. I have my I have a Uma regulator uh, Uma Air decal on the block. Well, this is getting the same thing too, because you know that's just for me and anybody else looking at the gun to know that oh it's been Uma regulated. And I say yeah, I put the Uma in there in the, the gun so but these are the parts and pieces that need to be assembled here so let me uh assemble it and show you before i actually put it everything screw it back into the air cylinder and then the air cylinder back into the action and there it is That's what's gonna go back into the air cylinder. Now, there is a vent hole right there. They want it direct opposite of the gauge, which it is. So, now I'm gonna go ahead and 
screw the whole assembly in and air it up and check it for leaks. Okay, everything's all put back together. Now it's no longer reading tank pressure. It's actually reading what the regulator is set at. And right now, you can't hardly see it because it says almost 150 bar and it was uh, the regular set at 145. So the gauge is not reading quite 150. So that's, the gauge is actually pretty accurate. So there you have it. Look at that. It's all ready to go back in now. What I did was I went ahead and filled it to, it says uh, 200 bar, but I went to 250 because I believe this and it'll uh, still work just fine. So we're gonna reassemble everything and go from there. Okay. Right here is the uh, mark I made. Right there on the air tube so that it can, the regular can vent. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right there, the two lines meet. That's where the regular's gonna vent. Everything's all screwed back in. Now it's time to drop the, oh, back here. Gonna have to remove the action from the stock. This is the hammer spring adjuster right here, but it's locked in 2.5 Allen wrench right on top here. You loosen that, you back it off, and then you can adjust the hammer spring, you know, in for, I'm assuming right now, in for more power clockwise and counterclockwise for less power. But you notice that there's two uh, notches here. Well, that set screw has to fall in between these notches right here. So in other words, you can't go a quarter of a turn and then lock it. it. It doesn't work that way. It's how this is, this whole thing is designed that half a turn at a time and then you can then you can lock it in place you know that's just how I'm seeing how it looks supposed to work anyways there you have it right there hammer spring adjustment but I'm going to shoot it like it is and without the hammer spring adjustment and see where I, what I get. And I'll be back soon after everything's all reassembled and have a gun set up on the crony and with the tactic cam hooked up, see what kind of groups I get now with uh, the gun being regulated. Okay, here is the advanced rainstorm. It is now Huma Uma regulated. So, some off camera shooting. This time I'm gonna, I was testing out some 17.5 NSA slugs, 17 grains, 17.5 grain. And we're gonna shoot it over the crony. See what kind of numbers we get. All right, so that's not bad for the slugs. It's uh, average was 844, it's spread of two, deviation of one. That's only uh, five shots. That's pretty good. The only reason why I didn't go like to 10 is because 10 shots because I only have the sample pack of these slugs, so I didn't want to use them all up. But 218 head size, 20.2 grain seems to be the the one for this uh, 
the Vanix. So now we're going to move on to uh, pellets. We're going to shoot the 18.13 grain. And I know, and before it was regulated, it was shooting extremely hot. And I can give you that that number here. That was uh, average house was 970, spread of 61, deviation of 18, and that was 10 shots. And every time I fired, it went downhill on the FPS, and I didn't like that curve. And because it, when I shot it, it was not very, it was accurate, but not hole in hole. So that's the reason why. I went ahead and regulated it. And I, I'm getting 30 shots or three magazines, and that's good enough for me because that's uh, that's what my uh, Hot Sun AT44 series air rifles get is uh, between 30 to 40 uh, shots per fill, and I'm happy with that. It doesn't bother me to. Uh, refill after uh, three magazines well, some of you guys may not like it but it doesn't bother me so there you go let's see what it does with uh, pellets all right there we go now let me uh, pick out let me pick this one down here right right there Let's see how it shoots. Eight eighty nine. Oh, they're just blowing that target apart. So let me go up top since we know it's accurate. Okay. Uh, let me shoot the one up here top because I can't really tell there we go now I can see it Alright, that was 10. So, thirty, almost 32 uh, foot pounds of energy. 888 is what it's averaging with the 18.13 grain spread of 6, deviation of 2. Uh, I think that's good enough. It's got the accuracy that I'm looking for, so it's, that's a wrap. There you have it, folks. Sharon is Karen. Stay safe. Shoot straight. May your fellow hit his target. And we'll see you in the next episode of Air Guns and Pesting Channel. See ya. All right. Five shots. At that half inch dot at my 30 yard backstop with the NSA 20.2 grain slug 218 head size. Let's see how she does. Off to the side. That's two. 845 843 844 
I'd say that's pretty good. 845.